Hello everybody and welcome to another video. In this video, I will be reacting to and attempting to refute the claims put forth by this YouTube short. The video is titled, No Evolutionist Can Answer This Question, Not Even Richard Dawkins. And the video is made by the channel Bible Explored with Graham Pettis. As I state in every video, and as the title suggests, I am nowhere near an expert in any scientific field. I am making this video purely to demonstrate that even I, a high schooler with zero degrees or work experience, can provide a counter to some of the most ridiculous arguments put forth by creationists. I am sure that more qualified people will see this video and ask of them to please correct anything or add additional information to whatever I say, and I'll pin the comments with further information. Before I go any further, I have to share with you that less than 4% of my viewers are subscribed. If you could subscribe to the channel, that would help me a lot as I look to pursue a career in science. Thanks for watching, now on with the video. Alright, just before I click play here, I have to make it crystal clear that I am not directly attacking any religion or any religious beliefs outside of those that seek to use religion as a means of disproving evolution. I posted my recent video on Twitter and I got a lot of hate from a, a bunch of evolutionists. And one guy asked me, he says, what do I mean by evolution? So here's, here's my, my definition of evolution that I want you to clarify for me. And we're gonna talk about macro evolution. I have never seen a dog produce a non-dog. Well, we're definitely starting off strong here. I don't even know where to begin. But this puts all other straw man arguments throughout the entire existence of the human race to shame. No respectable scientist has ever claimed anything remotely similar to this. Of course dogs cannot give birth to something else. We do not evolve like Pokemon. And if you've paid any attention since second grade, you know that evolution occurs gradually over tens of thousands of generations and millions and billions of years. It makes absolutely zero sense for you to be treating this as a checkmate scientist moment when you cannot even grasp the most basic points of evolution. Random mutations occur in the amino acids in the DNA from generation to generation. If the mutation is positive, then the organism will be more likely to pass it on to the next generation. If it is negative, then it will be less likely. This is all information that I learned in a ninth grade biology class. And so if you look at all the textbooks, they say that um, people somehow have evolved from uh, primordial soup. Uh, it rained millions of years on rocks, went down to the ocean and turned in the fish. And those fish turned in the uh, animals that walked on land and they uh, evolved in the birds. This is the propaganda that they show. So I want to see one piece of evidence. And Richard Dawkins doesn't, he can't even answer this, is I want to see one piece of evidence of macroevolution. Evolu and if you look at the definition of science, it says the intellectual and practical activity encompassing the systematic study of the structure and behavior of the physical and natural world through observation and experiment. Macroevolution cannot be observed. It's a religion. Subscribe to Bible Explored. Let me know below. And it is quite an extraordinary claim to say that macroevolution cannot be observed. And if this man had done any amount of research, he would realize how unfounded this claim is. We are blessed to live in a time period where endless amounts of reputable sources are at our fingertips at all times. And despite this, this man has somehow managed to dodge every pebble of the mound of evidence for macroevolution. Since you love the word observe so much, you can directly observe fossil records of countless animals and plants that demonstrate how certain organisms mutated over time until they became separate species after millions of years of different environments. Whales and their ancestors, Archaeopteryx, and even humans in comparison to great apes and early hominids are all demonstrations of macroevolution. Your inability to actually go out and find reputable sources with readily available information and examples of macroevolution is not the fault of scientists. I will provide reputable sources in the description that provide examples of macroevolution. Thanks for watching. 